Welcome to the next Homes on Homes podcast. This one's actually building a legacy. You know, when I was a kid, I took apart every single toy my mom and dad ever bought me just to see how it was made. And then I started taking apart radios. I started taking apart, you, you name it, I did. I mean, I was just the guy that was interested in what my dad was doing, which was ripping things apart and redoing it. And now we're, we're doing Homes on Homes Building a Legacy. When you were a little boy. You specifically. <laughs> yeah. When you were a little boy, we you were two years old. Yeah. I bought you a little toolbox full of tools, and I said, do not hit your sisters with these tools. See, I got confused because I heard hit your sisters uh. with these tools. That's what I got out of it. I mean, the if we're being honest, who hit whom here? You yeah. girls beat him up all the time. Yeah. And I kept saying, I, one of these days he's going to get bigger than you. Look at the size of him now. Yeah, he's finally got bigger. I mean, I feel like our biceps are a pretty close pretty. comparison. Yeah, yeah they're, they're fairly close. close yeah. yeah, they're pretty close. Yeah. But you didn't really play with the tools. You didn't really get into it. I tried to drag you, and let's build a, a, a fort, let's build a, a play gym. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was interested in electronics. It was like I wanted to motorize things. I was like, I thought that was really cool because I think as a kid, that was like what was up and coming for my generation. And then, you know, as you, you say, I had a black belt in Nintendo. Honestly, the older you got, I would try really hard to get you to work with me and you'd come for half an hour and you went back to play your game. But I, was I think like, that's the difference there is what you just said. You tried to make us interested in it versus you wanted to follow in your father's footsteps and wanted to do everything that he was doing. And we had other forms of entertainment, I suppose, and you just wanted us to be introduced to this so bad that Maybe we uh, pulled back a little bit. Well, you were when you were a kid, they didn't have like TVs and radios, and, <laughs> right? They had like sand, you had sand castles, and sandboxes, sandboxes. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. And I remember working with you in the backyard and helping you do stuff. And it like to That's me, I was like, I just want to play. Like mm -hmm. these are the weekends, let's play. Whether that's. But I get it. You guys were kids. Yeah. I get it. You wanted to play with all the neighbors. I mean, that's. I mean, when I was a kid, we played ball hockey in the street. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. what we did, and that was a lot of fun, actually. Car, yeah. right? You'd move yeah, the net. Yeah, so you have no. to grab the we nets and run. That. We did the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. What was the first television appearance you guys really did? Oh, for, I don't think I was really testing on your it memory until New Orleans when I was twenty-one. That was like my first real because I was pretty shy. I didn't want to be on anything. Yeah. Mine was Homes on Homes. Mine was uh, the fence nope. job. No. Nope. Oh, Yannix. Yannix. Were we right. on that? Hey, the show was about the film, and yeah. I had built Yon a to scale yeah. house. Yeah. yeah. And it was on wheels, and the roof could open. And I was telling him, I was constantly explaining to him what he needed to talk about and structure and how to do things. And I think he really liked me working there because I, he was picking my brain. And uh, I, I remember I came out and you guys were in the house because he pushed you in the house. I don't remember that. I, I'll never forget that because I remember being terrified. He goes, okay, go in the house. He's like, we're gonna film the cameras. We're gonna roll on your dad coming into the house and seeing you and, and he wanted me to come out and pretend like I was hosting. But I was like, this, I, I can't don't recall how old I all. was. But I remember just being like, oh my God, there's people around. Like, where, what do I do? What do I say? Where do I look? But I forgot about that. I, yeah, I still can't remember any of it. This was before the show. Nobody knew how to film it. I, I remember Scott, he was the producer at the time. He didn't know how to film it. And I got this phone call uh, from a friend of mine because they heard about the show. And this is where Whole House Disaster came in. He called me up saying, hey, a buddy at work, you know, they really got screwed by this contractor. And uh, they really could use your help. And right away I drove down. So I drove down there and I met the husband and wife. I went by myself and I went through the house and I'm like, oh my God, you guys are screwed. You're really in big trouble here. So then I phoned up Scott and I go, Scott, I found the house. You know, uh, I tell him about the, the whole house. It's a real disaster. And he's like, oh, we do kitchens or bathrooms. We don't do whole houses. And I said to him, I said, well, help, help these people or not, I'm helping them. So he goes, hold on. Then he comes down with the camera. And as I'm walking through the house with the homeowners, I would ask them questions. This is wrong. This is wrong. What'd you do here? How did this happen? And it got deeper and boom, that's how the show became. That's, yeah. that's how we started shooting the show. So it was, it was a natural thing. I think television, uh, let's say ex executives or, or networks at the time were thinking of new shows. And then who do we find to do the show? But instead, what they got was a guy that knew what he was talking about and 
doesn't know how to be on television and just became himself. Well, and that's, that's where it all began was that they followed the puck. That's what we always say. It's like they followed you instead of like creating It was this, more of a format before that. Yeah, there were these produced shows about construction and television where it was like we just took two worlds. So I should say you took two worlds and you're like, just film me. I'll talk to the homeowners. We'll talk to the trades. We'll teach you why you need to do it this way, how not to do it. And that's why Homes on Homes became so popular. Well, we filmed the first season. It came out. It uh, broke all kinds of crazy records. And then it just continued to grow. It didn't stop. But I remember, it was take your kid to work days. I, I'll never forget that first time I put the drill bit into my finger. Because you were using the number two Robbie. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it was bit. a nice blunt object that pierced the skin. Yeah. I remember that. Oh, it hurt right beside the nail. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. It's like, you better, you got to be careful. And Lisa, this is, this is how you learn. Yeah. I said, I bet that hurt. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it did. It did. I've done that. Yeah, now As I'm, you're bleeding. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember uh, my first day on the site for Take a Kid to Work Day, I held the camera. I was playing with the camera. Um, so I have a photo of me with like the big old thing on my shoulder that I probably couldn't even hold up well enough. Mike became interested because I brought him in in the summers and said, I'm going to pay all kinds of money and you're going to work really hard. Well, yeah. He worked really hard. Uh, he I did worked work really, really hard. hard, yeah. yeah. And <laughs> I paid him a couple bucks. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, I did. I, I'll never forget that summer. Because really, up until that point, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I mean, you're a kid. You're a kid that, you know, everyone at school is telling you, like, okay, well, what do you want to be for the rest of your life? I'm like, I just realized that I can't be Batman. So <laughs> I'm still coming to terms with that. You know, now i got to figure out what, I, what else I want to do. But then I came and worked for you. And I'm like, oh, this is fun. I like working with my hands. I, I, I like the camaraderie of working as a team. I, I like doing something different every day. And this was the fence job. We did 52 fences in a oh, subdivision, yeah. and I'll never forget that. It was, I always joke with people, I say, I was a gopher. I was a, go <laughs> for this, go for this. Go get this wheelbarrow, get this drill, get this uh, four by four. Not get... that anything's wrong with that. That's how you learn and that's, that's where you start. Where and you start. Exactly, this is why I have such an appreciation for every single person on the job site is that I started at the very bottom. Mm -hmm. I swept, I just labored, and I loved it though. And it was that summer that I was like, okay, I, I could actually have a career doing this. Not only that, it was like, you know, we only saw you every second weekend as a kid. Mm -hmm. So then it was, for me, a chance to catch up with you and, like, have fun together. Then you went back to school. I did. Then the very next summer. Same thing. I said, you want, you want to make more money? <clears throat> yeah. And that's how I got you in. Now, Sherry. Well, I've always been more stubborn. Let's be honest here. <laughs> yeah, but you were going to be what? You had no intention of being No, I wanted to be everything. Marine I, I, biologist? Yeah, I wanted to be a, a brain surgeon. I wanted yeah. to be a vet. I've never had any real driven career path in my head that I could foresee for the rest of my life. I just wanted to do everything, because why not? I could. Well, one thing I knew is you wanted to travel. Yes, and I did Holy a lot cow. of traveling. Uh, she, you fibbed to me. I, I just want yes, to go to Australia. You were going to Australia, Thailand. You, yeah. you went like crazy everywhere. I've traveled the world. I didn't see you for months. And I regret nothing. I was terrified, like my daughter. I can't even phone her. I was in South Africa. It was before phones were as easy as they were to contact home. Um, so I was emailing everyone to let, let you guys know what I was doing, that I was, you know, alive. Got bit by a lion. Uh, I did get bit by a lion. I'm, I remember. <clears throat> yeah. And Made out with a giraffe. I didn't make out with a giraffe. A giraffe put his tongue in my mouth. Oh, it was same aggressive. Same. Did a giraffe put his tongue in your mouth? Yeah, I was feeding him. And they, they're like, they have these really long tongues and they're black. And they like curl around the food. And I don't know. He just was like, maybe you have more food. I'm going to keep going for it. So you got bit by a lion. I and did. when I heard this, I panicked. I was working with a lion sanctuary. Um, so I was caring for lions and other animals like hyenas. And hyenas scare me to death, by the way. They are That's terrifying yeah. to look at. I've seen the Lion um, King. Great yeah. idea. Let's go take care of lions and hyenas. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like animals. Um, meerkats, really cool things. I don't know, <clears throat> things you would never have really done that often in your everyday life here in Toronto. So I flew down there by myself, met some people. We were staying in safari tents. And so we were working with predominantly cubs up until four months. And then they had six month lions there as well until they moved to another area. And six month old lions are big. They weigh more than I do. They're like, they're big lions. I, I thought went it was in, a baby, it wasn't a baby. No, I went into a pen with six month old white lions. And um, I was petting them because they were being moved off to somewhere else, I don't remember. So we were playing with them and I had one decide to get on my back and bite my shoulder, and I was alone, 
and just luckily someone had walked by so I could get help because I was not going to be getting out of there too easily. Was now, he, was he making a move? Like he was, yeah. Yeah. They were playing, so he'd chew on my shoelaces or my fingers or something. And yeah, luckily, someone came by, um, so everything was fine. But I would like to think he wouldn't hurt me. Oh, for he sure. It's nice. He was saying hi. Why would a lion want to eat you? But see, that's smart because knowing all this, he's like, "How do I? How do I hook Sherry? Sherry? How do I get <laughs> her in?" And he's like, "Hey, Sherry, we're we're traveling to New Orleans for work." Yeah. You like to travel, right, Sherry? Like, yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, well, maybe. You've been in New Orleans before? No. Yeah. No, I haven't. So I remember. Yeah. We we packed the crates, we loaded them, they yep. went, they went on the planes, they got flown down there. It's like the first time I've ever even worn construction uh, boots. We all flew down there. We yeah. we set up in the hotels and we I all lost half of our luggage. First day was the next day. First day we did a walk through <laughs> New Orleans, me. the lower ninth, and here's what we're gonna be doing. Look what's happened, the devastation. Which, which... was horrendous, if you guys recall, three oh, years yeah. later there weren't street signs, lawns weren't cut. No street lights, nothing. No, no electricity. Yeah, yeah, it's still devastated. And dead animals still lying around. Like, yeah. It was wild. There was these homes spray painted, boarded shut with, I think it was like the number of people that died. Yeah, animals. Uh, the animals. Uh, it, was, it was very, it was really sad. It was heartbreaking. And then here we are, like, okay, well, a couple Canadian uh, uh, contractors will come down and we'll, we'll work in this heat. It can't be that bad, right? You had a heat stroke. Yeah, <laughs> several times. I mean, I'm, as you can see, I'm quite dark, so I handle the sun very well. I remember everyone begging me, can we work overnight? Yeah. Yeah, we started working earlier in the morning to try to avoid some of the, the heat. What yeah. did I say? I keep know. drinking water, keep going. Mm -hmm. We have a trailer in case you need air conditioning, which many times Michael was in. Our washrooms were air conditioning, which was nice. <laughs> you kind of need a Not little break every it, once yeah, in a while. Yeah. It sounded like a knock, but that's okay. No, you were having heat strokes. Yeah, yeah. You and really I think were. I got heat stroke twice while I was in New Orleans. I think I got it twice. Yeah. Yeah, we started early mornings. The heat was like it hit, like you walked into a wall. It was and I so mean, it's, humid. it's one thing to to be surrounded by the heat and walk through a hot summer day, but it's entirely different to be working physically outside in in the sun in that kind of heat yeah. it takes a lot out of you yeah. so let's go to about a month in about a month in we had all the hydro poles in the ground using them as footings to build i wouldn't house even say that was a month in. off the ground that was pretty quickly you remember all this oh yeah and we were working six days a week at least 12 yeah. hours minimum if not a day. seven days a week yeah. yeah and really we all thought we were going to lose weight so we ate so much food drank so <laughs> much water and we all actually gained weight it was Totally the opposite. I did not expect yeah. that at all. Then you two started to get your groove. You really did. You were working super hard. You're on the scaffolds. Every day that rain would come in and the You're lightning would strike and the raindrops were the size of this water bottle hitting the ground. And the camera could not catch how strong that rain was. It just yeah. it couldn't. I don't I don't know why. I watched the show and I was like, yeah, it was worse than that, because yeah. it flooded within ten minutes of the rain. Everything was flooded which really led into why we were there, why we were trying to make a difference and build a house that could withstand a Category 5 hurricane. Mm -hmm. uh, or the flooding, if the control, levees ever broke again. Storm water management mm -hmm. control. I still look, on, look back at New Orleans with pretty fond memories. It was pretty incredible. Um, my first job ever was a full house build yeah. in the Lower Ninth Ward three years after Hurricane Katrina devastated the area. I learned how to read a measuring tape on site hiding behind some of those pillars because I was too embarrassed for all of the men to see that I couldn't who, read measurement. Who taught you? Michael taught me how to read a measuring oh. tape. I used to like count the ticks on a measuring tape because I could not process how to do it. I'm yeah. still not amazing at math, but that's okay. I can read a tape. That's, uh, that's the main thing. You have to be able to read a tape. But uh, yeah, you know what New Orleans taught me was that <clears throat> I can do anything I put my mind to. And it was one of the, at, at the time in my life, all of us, it was like this was the hardest thing I think any of us had ever done. The hours were crazy, the work was crazy, the sun, the heat, the conditions were crazy, but we did it. I would still say it's one of the best things I've ever done. Not necessarily the hardest, I really, really enjoyed it. I think I really um, came into myself on that job site. I was really shy and meek. Um, I still was that way with cameras in my face. I wasn't really into that. Sure, but by the end of it, you had everyone in New Orleans that wanted to hire you. Yeah, They'd which... Like, Can we hire your daughter? And I'm not saying that to brag. I think that's pretty incredible as a woman being in a male-dominated industry, not knowing anything about what I was doing. I took it really seriously. I didn't want to be just a girl on site who didn't know what I was doing. Even though I didn't know what I was doing, I tried. 
and I put that effort in and I wanted to work hard and I wanted the respect of everybody and it goes to show just what keeping your head down and doing your job really So do does. you remember this because it was so hard at first. Everyone whined and complained. It was just too hot. It was too much. It was a lot. And I said, we're on a mission. We're going to keep going. We're on a mission. We cannot stop. I mean, we, uh, we couldn't work at, at night because we were working on generators. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We didn't have the lighting power to light up. That's yeah. why I'm like, guys, we can't even light up mm -hmm. and use the tools to build the house. So grueling, it was. Then we're getting near the end. Remember the end? Which, oh, the, we had a- Giving the house back. Oh, I, th I thought you were talking about your birthday. Right about, oh no, my birthday. Yeah, it was fun. We had a pretty good party for your well, birthday. That was, that, like, well, we had a parade yeah, through New Orleans. It. Yeah, it was pretty cool. That was a memorable day. Yeah. Especially when I woke up the next day thinking what happened last night. You're like, wait, that, <laughs> So it was memorable or it you couldn't so memorable, remember it? It was actually. <laughs> I started to remember. <laughs> yeah. I'm talking about when we were getting ready to give the house back and everyone realized that they had worked so deep, so hard for almost three months mm -hmm. to give the home back on the anniversary of Katrina three years to the day. Mm -hmm. And that was all true. We did. We did that yep. day. Now, all of a sudden, everyone's done. How did you feel? It was pretty incredible. Gloria is the sweetest, most deserving woman. How could you not want to help her out? All she's, she's done her entire life is help people out and her grandchildren and give them a place to live and feel comfortable and safe. So that was, it was pretty incredible. I've never felt like a, a superhero until that day, honestly. First feeling, superhero? Yeah, for me it was, again, the confidence. I was like, you know what, I can do anything I put my mind to. And it felt like we're helping these families. We're doing good things and it feels good doing them. Like the whole way through, like, okay, it's hard, but we did it. We got through it. We got through the other side. I'm like, if I can get through this, I can do anything. Just like that, yeah. we were done. Yeah. And we went home. I know. I hated that. Like, why are we still not there? That's my point. When you come home, did you feel like everything was strange? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because things, you know, we did this incredible thing, and then we come home, and it's like, you come back to, like, normalcy. And you're like, well, this is, like, What's next? we were just so used to being completely enveloped in this different atmosphere and then you come home and you're like and living in right. hotels and yeah just making life but work. we created our own little family as we're living but in let's hotels. do that again i want to build a you house do it again yeah i don't want to do just renovations i want to build a house i want to build several you want to travel of course i do. build is what you want of to course do. i do mm -hmm. so when we on. got back and we started filming our regular show at the time i believe it was inspections, Homes inspections. i think so yeah it was. Uh, so we continued shooting back here, and everyone was, you know, oh, man, that was so great. It, it became a subject for the next year of the, the wonderful feeling that was going down to New Orleans mm -hmm. because there was so many memories there. And, I mean, everyone was getting tattoos, and I had this earring pierced. Oh, I got uh, my ear pierced. My ear pierced. Well, I had this one pierced because yeah. my, when my dad died when I was 30, and I had the brother diamond. Mm -hmm. And everyone's getting tattoos to remember why. I didn't get it. In oh, New Orleans, tattoo. they were getting yeah. tattoos. And I already had tattoos, so I'm like, I don't want any more tattoos. Yeah. I put in the other diamond earring. I got my Tragus pierced. Tragus? I think that's Tragus. This is for New Orleans. So yeah. that's my memory, my dad in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. We come back, we start filming again and going into it. And if you guys remember, you were always not in front of the camera. You were in the background. Yeah, we oh. were very much construction crew. I remember that from before New Orleans until... Oh God, for years. It wasn't until I was like 24 that I actually started yeah, to I don't be think in front been, of the camera. It hasn't been that long even that we've been But I was in testing you guys. I knew you were afraid of the camera and bit by bit I was pulling you in. And the way I pulled you in was to say, Mike, why am I doing this? Like my father did, yep. right? To make you think. Mm -hmm. So naturally in front of the camera, you started to be very natural. Mm -hmm. I did the same thing to you, Sherry. You started to be very natural. I think it just, at some point, it doesn't feel natural to be in front of a camera, but the difference for me is you're still being yourself. I could never be an actor of any kind. I would be horrendous. Yes, you would. See, <laughs> I can't even lie if I tried. Um, so I think the, the thing is we become friends and family with everyone we work with, yeah. and, except Mike, though. <laughs> is that the sound man? Yeah. <laughs> stay, stay. 
um, that it just becomes a lot easier to do. I'm not talking to a camera. Mm -hmm. I'm talking to my buddy over there. Mm -hmm. And we're being ourselves and discussing things that we're Ryan, really doing cameraman. on yep. an everyday basis. Yeah. Who runs around like crazy and just yeah. with the yeah. camera. Yeah, I what? could never. Your shoulder must be so sore. We're, yeah, we created, we, well, created, we have a family here. It's like we have our family, but then we also have like our- It expanded. Our, our family of people that we work with, mm -hmm. and it's it's that's what makes the hard times a little easier. So what happened next? Next was, I mean, I came for me. I came back. We just kept working. Like I, all... I liked working on the tools. I, I did for me. I wasn't like, oh, I'm gonna have a career in television. Like, do we all I have am... favorite jobs mm. though? Like, I have jobs I think of fondly, and I don't feel like I remember every every other aspect of every single job we've done, except a few that yeah. stand out to me. I mean, one of the ones that stands out for me is was the first job I ever ran. Was oh yeah, uh, my, garage. my garage. No, I ran what? a few before that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought it was oh, a garage no, that's too. Right. I, tested I ran you before I let you. I do ran my... a decent amount of jobs before that. I don't remember. Then. Um, I ran. It was a teacher in Brampton. Oh and yeah. His school uh, wrote in, and they're like, you know, he's the best teacher. We want to help him. They had students come in, and uh, they worked with me, and and we did his entire basement. And that was the first job I ever ran. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, I remember being working with Blake. That was shortly after we did High Park. Yeah, I'm working with Blake, hanging doors and trim till like the picture ten behind at night. You, High Park. Oh, it's like yeah. where that's... Sherry met Blake yeah. and fell in love. Yeah, I, I met my husband on that job site, which was very cool. Mm -hmm. But it's also I built a castle, bro. That's cool. Who else has built a castle? Yeah, that's 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 a really cool memory for me. It was a crazy hot summer again, and we were having um, some kind of crazy heat going on. So we had firefighters come out and set up those chairs so that we all didn't pass out with heat stroke. Because uh, I think everyone was getting heat stroke. Yeah. Pull the forearm mm -hmm. in the chair, which will bring your body temperature mm -hmm. down and keep your blood from thickening is yeah. Yeah. what happens before And then you... go back to work. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, it, was, it was that, to me, I still think High Park building that castle was one of my favorite jobs. Yeah, so cool. A, it was that you had this community of people all come together, and we all wanted the same thing, which was to rebuild this playground. And we worked seven days a week. Mm -hmm. It was it was only a couple weeks that we spent two, there, I think, or... but crazy hours, like yeah. early morning uh, till. Total was three weeks. It was supposed <clears throat> to be two weeks. We had complications, and then which really pushed us to work seven days a week to yeah. get it done to get back on schedule. Yeah. And then, I, I'll never forget, because it was like, it was crazy, you know, relationships that changed all of our lives happened there. You, mm -hmm. you met Blake. Blake became one of my good buddies, too. And then, Sherry went and married him. But, uh, no. I'm, Some would say still, I was friends with him first. Yeah, but then, I remember the kids running in. Yeah. And, see, and that, to me, I was like. Trying to get the sword out of the stone. That's like cool. seeing all the kids enjoy our hard work. And I was like, this is what it's all about. Mm -hmm. This is why we do what we do. That was yeah. fun. Yeah. Like little things, I didn't want to put the homeless mark on the castle. And it's me thinking about business. I'm like, man, you know what? It's a castle. I got to get a big stone, get a custom sword made, mm -hmm. and I'll put the mark in front of the stone. When mom and dad are taking pictures of their kids trying to pull the stone out, the homeless mark would become a symbol. I want to see that. was my, my kids whole to that goal. Park. Yeah. And it's become a symbol. You know, the guy standing there crossing his arms. Why did I stand there and cross my arms? You uh, You didn't want to put your, you didn't want to put your hands in your pocket. No, no it's like you, when you think, you cross your arms. I always cross my arms because I, I just don't know what to do with my hands. I would stand there and think, how am I going to fix that? I'd stand yeah. there and cross my arms and think and think, how am I going to fix that? Mm -hmm. That became a mark. Who would have mm -hmm. thought? People knew when they saw, even if it was a cutout and it wasn't your face on that. If you're like, oh, that's Mike Holmes. That's a Mike Holmes pose. Oh, like a silhouette. Silhouette. Thank you. That became like your thing. That was my marketing strategy. It wasn't just so much because, you know, it was funny because 23 years on television now, grueling 12 months of the year, nonstop filming, nonstop going. And because I owned the production company, I, I was like trying to be so efficient that the production company, a construction company had to work hand in hand. So camera, everyone's full time going. Then the editing, if I stop the assembly line, then I can go away. But I couldn't go away to have a vacation because oh, of the assembly line. You are all talk. So, I'm no. going to go away. When, when are you going away? I know where You'll he's going never with stop. This. Let's talk about one that stands out to me right now is Michael. 
Yes. Are we going to tease some jobs? Sure. Don't give away too much, though. We can give away a little. A little. Like a little sneak peek. Michael is what I would call a super fan. He's watched every single show that you've ever done, so that we've smart. ever done. And we surprised him. You know, he they wanted to do, they needed to do a renovation on their house. Uh, desperately, and yeah. We set up uh, a little surprise that, you know, a contractor was coming by. We're going to take a look at the job. We're going to give him a quote. And he didn't know that it was Mike Holmes. Well, Michael had put off renovations at his house for so long because he never trusted any other contractor but you to go to his home. Well, which is he why they never did any mom renovations. And dad yeah. Not to hire But that's why they never had any yeah. renovations done previously because no, nope, it's not Mike Holmes. They're not coming to my home. Here's something I don't know if you know. About a year and a half before, could be two years before, uh, he had come to my house, but I was filming in the United States. I was filming Mike? probably Michael Rock did? the Block something. Yeah. It was Anna who said, you know, because she knew this woman. He's got a diehard fan here. He's a really good kid. And um, so we set it up that he would come to my house. And I signed an, auto an autographed picture for him. And he came to my house. Loved really? my Yes, he called it a compound. I didn't loved know Loved my that. place. Was yeah. disappointed that I wasn't there. But I was out filming somewhere else. And took that picture and took it home. That's how he got yeah, that picture. Yeah, I saw that. On his, on his wall. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, or his desk, wherever he had it there when we saw it his bedroom. It was on his shelves, yeah. But how did you feel at the end of the show when we redesigned the home? We had Michael work with us. Mm -hmm. And I think, really, he, he wanted nothing but a full-time job with us. Yeah. Honestly, that was my takeaway from that job. It was cool to give back to such a, a, a diehard fan of yours, but to watch Michael flourish on that job and realize that he can become a little bit more dependent and he does like working with his hands and to listen to his knowledge from watching the show was very, very cool to me. Well, ultimately, that's why we do what we do, is we want to help people. We want to teach people how to do things the right way. All this we hard work. the game in the trades. That's it. Yeah. We want to encourage more people to get into the skilled trades. And then at the end of it, after these jobs, it's like, this is, this is the reward, is that you see these homeowners like Michael and his family, and you see how much they appreciate it, how much they were in need. And that's the best part of our job. Yeah, you get it here. Yeah, it's driving me crazy. Can you yeah, get it? Yeah, yeah. It's like in my eye. Oh, it's been in my eyelash, and I'm trying to pretend I can't see a little hair. But this, so one of the things I love about Homes on Homes building a legacy is that this show has evolved so much. Like if you look back at Homes on Homes when you first started till now, I mean, we still teach people. We mm -hmm. still show people the latest and greatest products about how to hire a good contractor, how to avoid a bad contractor, what to do, what not to do. But also now, what's different is that we involve a lot of story. We involve family. Like the legacy of our company, why I started working for you in the first place was the legacy, was that eventually to take over your company, you know? And it's like, here we are now sitting here talking about building a legacy, what we've been building for years, and that's what this show's all about. Yesterday, you went there, Sherry and I were mm -hmm. filming with the designer, and we were doing two different shows, mm -hmm. trying to be efficient again. And pickups. Uh, two Tuesday. different television shows with the designer, and Ryan, our cameraman, he's, he's, he's wild, I love this, because he gets on his goggles oh and pulls goodness. out his drone and flies th from outside in through the front door, boom, 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 through three things on the table up behind us and adding that element of, let's call it special filming. Right? Yeah. It's, and again, having special people around me, Ryan, all these wonderful people that I love. Do you remember? And they're stuck here. You guys, sorry. Yeah. They're stuck. <laughs> you, we used to have to rent a helicopter to get those shots. Yes, and we Is did. That oh, Is we that true? Did that. Well, In we New did Orleans. That. That's yeah. hilarious. We did that. I don't recall. Yeah. That was kind of expensive. Yeah. yeah. We, did the, we did do that. Um, by the way, if you want to watch uh, Homes on Homes building a, building a Legacy, which you should. Absolutely. It's going to be airing real soon on Cottage Life. Uh, by the way, if you ever want to hear anything about a podcast, just send in to us. Go to makeitright.ca and give us an idea what to talk about, because obviously we can talk. I mean, I can talk for days. Yeah, it's, it's quite unfortunate. <laughs> and if you really want to watch the new show, which I highly encourage, I think you're going to love it. Very heartwarming, very... Back to the basics of teaching, mm -hmm. learning, and talking to the trades and having the trades be right on camera for you. Watch the show. It's going to be on Cottage Life. We'll see you on the next one. Good job, guys. Thanks, Holmes. Thanks. You too. I'm hungry.